Um, can you just tell me your full, full name first, sir? Sure, it's Captain Benjamin Michael Middendorf. And what's your uh, hometown, sir? I'm from uh, Orinoco, or Rochester, Minnesota. And what's your current billet right now, sir? Right now I'm the company commander for Headquarters Company, 5th Marine Regiment. And when you were nominated for this, sir, what was your billet then? Back then uh, I was uh, the commander of Golf Company, 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines. Do you have like a hometown newspaper, sir, that we can uh, market this out to, sir? Yeah, it'd be the Post Bulletin is the name of it. I can send you an email for that. Okay, sir. All right, sir. So, just a couple of questions, basically. Um, how were you nominated for this? Was there a particular person that um, put you up for it, sir? I found out after uh, the the Almar came out that, that knowing that I got it that I, my uh, fellow company commanders went to my battalion commander, and they uh, they're the ones that kind of said, "Hey, sir, you need to think about submitting." Cap Middendorf up to the left, which uh, knowing what it represents, and they did, th that was pretty humbling piece just to know that my peers were the ones that kind of recommended it to the battalion commander, and uh, that's how kind of the nomination part started. And uh, what does this award mean to you, sir? To me, it really to me it represents you know all the work the hard the Marines do uh, day in and day out. I, you know. I got, to be, I, I got privileged enough to be in charge of a, a great crew of guys, um, phenomenal officers, staff COs, NCOs, and junior Marines down there doing all the work. And it just represents all the hard work that they did in a, in a tough combat deployment, pretty dynamic combat, combat deployment. Um, PTP, the whole nine yards that you go through deploying to Afghanistan, um, you know, they just represent the best of what we are as Marines. And I just got, I was lucky enough to be the guy in charge. And uh, as the golf company commander then, sir, what were your uh, responsibilities as their leader? Uh, you're, I mean, you're responsible for everything, especially in theater, your morale, welfare, discipline, uh, all aspects of their lives you're responsible for to try and to make sure they're taken care of, provided for, and that they're trained and equipped for the missions, uh, whatever the mission ha happens to be at that particular point in time. Uh, responsible for all the planning, for all the operations, all the different coordination that goes through, and uh, then directing the combat operations as we were, as we were executing. Right, sir. And uh, what does this mean to you, sir? What does it mean being nominated by, especially by your peers, sir? Yeah, it, it's just humbling. Um, it, you never know quite how to respond to some of these things because you, you don't feel like you did anything different than anybody, any other company commander was out there. Uh, they, we all did a lot of the same type of stuff. I don't feel like I was any better. That's not what it's about. I think it just represents uh, the very best of Marine leadership, and uh, I, I don't feel like I did anything different, but uh, to be selected, um, I just hope to, to do it justice. And as, as a leader, that, as a leader then, and as a leader now, what's your, you know, what's your main concern every single day that you come in, you know, whether it was putting on your gear and get going out with your Marines, or coming in here and leading a whole company of uh, Marines? Yeah. Leadership, to me, it can be summed into one word, and it's trust. Um, we have instant will in being instant orders. They have to, Marines got to do what they're told to do. But uh, if they trust the guy in charge of them, they're going to they're gonna want to do it. Uh, so leadership is, there's good leaders, and there's, there can be bad leaders, too. And I just wanted to be a good one. And didn't, didn't want to be the best. just wanted to be good at what I was doing and uh, have my Marines trust that I knew what I was talking about and that I'd take care of them. I wouldn't put them in stupid or bad situations. I give them everything that they can, that I could, to provide to them while we're outside the wire, fighting the Taliban. Uh, so they got to trust me, and I got to trust them that they're going to make the right decisions on the spot when I can't be there to be over their shoulder. Um, that they shoot the right people, don't shoot the wrong people. Uh, so leadership's all about trust, whether it's garrison or combat. And I wor work pretty hard to establish that trust between myself and the Marines. Um, was a uh Tell me about your previous deployments um, in Afghanistan and coming before that. Yeah, so I've done uh, four total deployments now. Uh, my first deployment was on the 31st Mew. I was in a boat company back in 2004, 2003-2004. Uh, my next deployment was to Afghanistan. I was in RC East uh, with 2nd Battalion, 3rd Marines. I was both deployments with 2nd Battalion, 3rd Marines. And then uh, went to TBS as an instructor. I uh, was there and then went to EWS. Then came back to the fleet, took over Golf 2-5. Um, my last deployment uh, on the was a, prior to this Afghanistan one was on the 31st Mew as well. I was a Hilo company commander, uh, participated in Operation Tomodachi, 
we were able to go ashore and help out the Japanese following the March 11th earthquake. And then very quickly we got back from that and turned around for an OEF PTP. And uh, that was our last deployment here, uh, my last point with Golf 2-5. How does it feel being a leader of Marines? Uh, it's just, again, it's humbling. I, I work pretty, the Marines would always, I'd always tell the Marines that I'm the laziest guy in the company because they they're the ones who do all the work. And they, they'd always, they'd see how much you, you, know, you sleep as an officer and everything else. But uh, it really just boils down to, it's humbling to be in charge of these men and, and uh, watch them go to war and see the incredible things. I can tell you the most impressive thing for me was uh, the first time my company got shot at, there was not that many combat vets inside the company. And I was there on that patrol where the company first took contact. It was just a squad size reconnaissance and watched these guys that I'd seen come, come out of SOI um, in their first firefight. After all the training we'd gone through, 29 Palms, 400 Liggett, and watching them just do, nobody's freaking out, nobody's doing anything crazy. They're just doing their jobs, trying to take care of their buddies and kill the bad guys and make sure they don't shoot the good guys. Uh, that, that, that was pretty, that, that was extremely humbling. I kind of forgot that I was a company commander for a minute because I was, I was so in awe of watching my Marines just do what they do. Yes, sir. And can you tell me what made you decide to join the Marine Corps over any other service or any other job out there? For yeah, I mean, the easy answer is my dad was a Marine in Vietnam. Um, and he wasn't a career Marine, he was a corporal. Uh, first Marine Reconnaissance was battalion, and, but it stuck with him for his entire life. And it had a pretty dramatic impact on me because the Marines were the best who would do more with less. Um, and the Marine Corps just, uh, we, we take our profession uh, very seriously. And uh, every, a Marine wants to be the best and that, that's what we represent and we work pretty hard at it. And there's a reason that we're, we have the reputation and I want to be a part of that. That's um, do you have someone that you would consider your mentor to? Uh, well, I have lots of mentors. Um, I guess my biggest one would be, he's retired now, but he's my company commander in Afghanistan the first time around when I was a lieutenant. And he, uh, Major Kelly Grissom, he's retired now. Uh, just a, the, the epitome of a war fighter. And we had some pretty tough times over there and he was just beyond reproach in everything that he did. And uh, I, I still contact him and keep in contact with him all the time. And, if I ever have something I don't know quite how to deal at, I'll, I'll give him a call or send him an email. And, hey, sir, how do, you, how do you tackle this one? And those connections are, uh, you know, they, they still help to this day. So, you know, you look up to these other former Marines that you just come in contact to day in and day out. And, you know, you don't, you, we never stay in contact with them like we always want to. But we certainly, uh, every time we do get to talk to them, it's like we never left. And that's the best part. You just look for those next situations where you get together with the Marines that you got to serve with in the past. And then it's, again, just like nothing ever changed. And that's what keeps the Marine Corps going around, I think. Awesome, sir. Is, is there anything else you'd like to say about uh, leadership or being nominated for this award, sir? Yeah, again, the Leftwich Award, is, it's, it's bigger than any one man. You know, again, I, I, I just happen to be the guy that they picked this year, but it, it just represents what Marine, officers, Marine officership is all about. And, uh, again, you could probably replace my name with any other name of a Marine captain out there leading Marines in Afghanistan or leading Marines on the on the 31st MU or a West Coast MU or an East Coast MU. Uh, you know, we just, uh, we all work pretty hard because we, we all take it so seriously. And just to kind of, to be the guy that represents that, uh, it, again, pretty pretty humbling for me and I just want to do it justice.